that I'll call up my brother, um, Chief Mekubadia Ben Cohen Levy, to start us out. Arukaba. Bless him. Hallelujah. 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 Give no honor and praise, respect, glory, and allegiance to our God and our King, the Holy One, the Only One, Israel. We all must say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thanking the Most High God for my life, the lives of my family, the lives of my loved ones, and the lives of Israel. I thank the Most High God for the time that he gave my father, Cohen Levy. I thank the Most High God for my Ima who's home watching and for Emi who's home watching. I pray that the Most High God will be with all of you who is home. I know a lot of people are home today. We are snowed in somewhat. But the Most High God made a way for us to get here. Amen. And we give, give thanks and praise to him. Because on the ride here, you see it and you like, there's always a, a reason to bow out. Now, I was on my way here. I'm on the, I'm on the highway. I'm on the belt. Belt Parkway. I'm already in Brooklyn. Chief Ooze calls me like, yo, what you think? We gonna uh, go virtual? I said, brother, I'm halfway there. I said, y'all know we not going virtual because I'm already in Brooklyn. So I'm like, nah, bro, we got to do this now. Amen. So he said, all right, is our car's on his way. I said, well, if it's three of us, we good. Right. And we good. Right. We going to get the job done, brothers and sisters. Amen. You have to get the job done. When I was young, my father, would, this would be unacceptable for men to not be here on a Shabbat day in a snowstorm. Say what? I said it would be unacceptable. He would be, and listen, and my Abba didn't drive. So guess who was driving? My Ema. Ema was driving in this craziness. Snow, rain, sleet, whatever. She was driving. And we was going. Shomrim always had to be here. There was no, never no excuse. My Abba would have had necks. Like, what? Brothers better get here. You got to have that place shoveled out. What if the sisters come? You ain't going to have the sisters shovel, right? So you got to get out here, brothers and sisters. Now, obviously, this is very inclement weather, but those who can come, come. Amen. If you can make it out, then make it out. If you can't, then stay home cozy in your blanket and listen to me teach. <laughs> <laughs> but God is good, brothers and sisters. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy that the Most High God showed me kindness and on the roads. I, there's always somebody that think that they're a dead devil on the road. That's going to go fast, 80 miles per hour, driving fast, swerving, switching lanes. No, I'm going to go right in this middle lane, take my time, and I'm going to get to where I need to go. Because I don't got time. I'm not trying to press you. I, I know my car go fast. It ain't going to go fast in that snow, though. I'm, I'm good knowing that my car is able to go fast. I don't need to go fast, though. I'm good. I just want to get here safely. I like me better in one piece than in 20. So I thank God for my life. I thank God for all your lives. I thank God for all the brothers and sisters that are, that are home watching. I thank God for the brothers that are here because the Most High God has a job for us to do and we can't stop no matter what. This portion today is called Mishpatim, meaning judgments, ordinances, brothers and sisters. Amen. There's reasons why the Most High God left on record judgments and ordinances for us because if you don't, you're going to have chaos. chaos. You're going to have people to do whatever they want to do. That's why for the life of me, I can't understand our brothers and sisters that, that preach in the Christianity that say that the laws have been abolished and that there's this new covenant. Okay, so then that means I could do whatever I want to do to you because the laws don't exist. Right. That doesn't make any sense. These laws are forever. The Most High God is forever. Amen. You heard our brother Kidani say that if, you, if the, the, the sun, moon, and stars exist, then these laws exist. That's ex very accurate. If they're here, then we're here. He said, as long as there's a sun, moon, and stars, the nation of Israel will be here. So if that means we're here, then that means the laws are here. We have to continue with these laws, commandments, and statutes. This is our, our way of life. This is not just something that we just read and say, all right, I want to do this this day. No, this is an everyday thing. Every day you have to choose to be righteous. Every day you have to choose to do these laws, commandments, and statutes. You can't wake up in the morning and say, oh, today I'm not going to wear my fringes. That's not how this works. Every single day. You can't say, oh, I'm just going to, I'm feeling like I want to eat something unclean today. Yeah. No, you can't do that. You can't, take a day off. you can't take a day off from this way of life. This is a constant thing. This is going to be your survival. This is your life. It's actually your lifeline. It's your lifeline. If you want to live a nice, prosperous life, this is the way you do so. Now, does that mean it's going to be all the time great and prosperous? And, no, because time and chance happen to us all. But guess what? The Most High God is merciful. The Most High God is king. And if he sees that you're trying and doing that which is 
like us, he's going to show you that kindness and that mercy. Trust me. Trust me. Give it a shot. My Abba used to always say, you know what? Try it. You might like it. Try it. Try this way of life and see how God treats you. Try it. The Most High God is forever. The Most High God is merciful. He's compassionate. You know, yesterday I went out there to that funeral and as my brother said, it was a sad situation to hear the, the, the now widow speak of her husband and having an argument that day and all of that stuff. And all I could think was, you know what? You can't be beefing with people too long, man. You got to get that off your chest. And I said that before. Get that off your chest. Get that up off you because you don't know when the Most High God is going to say their time is up or your time is up. And so now you got that regret and that pain in your heart that's going to always overplay in your head that you didn't get a chance to say dust and dust and dust to that person. So get that off, brothers and sisters. If you got somebody that offended you, talk to them. See what you could do about it and try and fix it. I had a, 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 a situation where um, somebody offended their, 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 uh, their mother and I've been speaking to the young man and I've been speaking to him because although I know that the Torah says thus and thus and thus, we're not in a position to create that kind of penalty for, for that kind of uh, misdeed. But what I do know is that the Most High God is merciful. And sometimes you just got to talk and see what you could do to try and make that person better. And so that's the approach that I took. And I continue to talk to these young men and these young women about the things that they do because it could, be, it could cost them their life. Amen. And I'm not trying to be burying no young men and no young women. You know, that young man was 22 years old. 22 years old ain't nothing. You didn't, you didn't live no life yet at 22 years old. So I give thanks and praise to the Most High God for um, my life. I thank God for my parents Amen. who would definitely give out some mako, rabo, some makas, because guess what? We all need it. We all needed it. The Most High God put parents in your path to correct you, to show you the right from wrong. You can either listen or you don't listen. Those of us that didn't listen, we receive maka. Sometimes we receive maka from the Most High. Sometimes we receive maka from other people. But the key is to learn from those mistakes. Learn from that so that we could do better. Talk to these young men, talk to these young women, and try to help them out. We don't, we don't, we don't know all the answers, but guess what? We might know some of the answers that, to the, some of the questions that you have. So it's our jobs, as the streets would say, as the OGs, we got to start talking to these young men and young women. I call my email all the time. I could ask her anything. I call some of the elders and I ask them questions because guess what? I don't know everything. And the minute that you think you know everything, it's going to be your demise. Talk to your elders. Talk to the brothers. Talk to the elder sisters. Talk to them. Get some advice. Get some advice. But today's portion is about judgments, ordinances, laws, rules, because we need this as a nation of Israel to proceed. Let's get into this portion. Hallelujah. We're in a portion of Mishpatim, which is found in the book of Shemot, which is Exodus chapter 21, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now these are the ordinances which thou shalt set before them. Right. If thou buy a Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve. And in the seventh year he shall go out free for, for nothing. nothing. If you buy a Hebrew servant. So this is talking about your brother, your sister, someone that is... You, it may not be your blood, but it's your brother and your sister, another Israelite. Let's read. If he come in by himself, he shall, he shall go, go out by himself. himself. If he be married, then his, his wife, wife shall, shall go, go out with him. him. Meaning, if he came in by himself, he's going out by himself. He's not, he doesn't owe you anything. But if he comes in with his wife, he's leaving with his wife. Mm -hmm. Let's read. But if the servant shall plainly, excuse me. Okay. If his mat fall, if his master give him a wife, and she bear him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. Right, because the wife belonged to the master, which means the children belong to the master. And that's fine, but let's read on. But if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out. Then his master shall bring him unto God, mm -hmm. and shall bring him to the door or unto the doorpost. And his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. Right. He made that decision. He's like, I don't want to leave my master. I don't want to leave my wife. I don't want to leave my children. I'm going to stay, and I'm going to serve. They make a contract. He gives them an earring, bores his ear through an awl, and that's it. There's no rocket science to it. Let's read on. Seven. 
if a man sell his daughter to be a maid servant, she shall not go out as men servants do. Right. If she please not her master who have espoused her to himself, then he shall let her be redeemed. redeemed right. To sell her unto a foreign people that have no power. He shall have no, no power, power, seeing that he has dealt deceitfully with her. Right. And if he espouse her unto his son, he shall deal with her after the, the manner, manner of, of daughters. daughters. Right. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her conjugal rights, he shall, shall he... not diminish. Right. So now, this is specifically talking about a daughter that was a slave daughter or a servant daughter. Let me not say slave. A servant daughter. This is not talking about a regular common right. uh, marriage where it's the... A man has more than one wife. This is not what it's talking about. I know a lot of women like to use this precept as to say, well, if he get another wife, then my conjugal rights can't diminish and this can't go and I, they got to treat me the same. This is talking about a servant wife. So if you want to compare this precept, then you're saying that you're a servant. So you got to read carefully before you actually start quoting the book and saying thus, thus, and thus. This is talking about something specific. This is not talking about the common... Uh, marriage of a man having more than one wife. Let's read. Eleven. And if she, and if he do not these three things unto her, then she shall go out for nothing without money. Mm -hmm. He that smiteth a man so that he dieth shall surely be put to death. Wait a second. So this right here, he that smiteth a man so that he dieth shall surely be put to death. You're not supposed to be putting your hands on other Israelites. This is what this is talking about. You can't be fighting people and hitting them and next thing you know, you knock somebody and they die. You punch them in the face, he fell, he hit his head on the concrete, he died. Guess what your penalty is? Death. You got to be put to death. Let's read. And if a man lie not in wait, but God cause it to come to hand, then I will point thee, appoint thee a place whether he may flee. Meaning what? You didn't have no beef with him. Something happened. Y'all working together. Maybe you dropped a hammer on his head by accident. He dies. You go to the city of refuge. That's what this is about. You're not, he's talking about an accidental death. This is not something that you lied and wait for and you say, yo, I don't like this guy. I'm beefing with this guy. I got a problem with him. Next thing you know, he accidentally dies. But now you look suspicious because all this time you've been talking about how you want to kill him and how you don't like him. And how you want to hurt him. And when you see him, this is what you're going to do. So now, he accidentally dies. And now you're looking like who? Suspect number one. Absolutely. You look, you, you raise my level of suspicion, brother. <laughs> you look like you're guilty. Yes. Because your mouth testifies against you. And that's something that I wanted to talk about too. Earlier, when my brother was talking about it, he said, um, you got to be careful what you say out your mouth. You know, Chief of Chief, may the most high bless his memory, used to always say that. He used to say, you hear people talking about, oh, my leg is killing me. My this is killing me. Don't say that. Just say it hurts. Say it might, it might be bringing you pain. But the moment you start saying things that you don't realize that words have power, and you start talking about, oh, this is killing me, you better be careful with how you express yourself. It might be hurting you. Just say it hurts. Oh, my back hurts. You talking about, oh, my back is killing me. My neck is killing me. No, don't say that. Watch how you speak. Watch how you express yourself. Watch the things that come out your mouth. So even in this situation, be careful what you're talking about other people because guess what? You're going to look like suspect number one. All this time you're talking about, yo, when I see ooze, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> when I see ooze, I'm going to kill him. Now the whole world knows that you said when you see ooze, you're going to kill him. Next thing you know, something happened to ooze. Who you think we coming to talk to? You're going to be number one suspect. Let's read. 14. And if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor. Right. To slay him with God. Right. Thou shalt take him from mine altar that he may die. Right. You see how they try to make it like, oh, if you go run into a, a, a church or a temple or something, he's hands off, hands off. You can't touch him. No, 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 no. The Most High said, if you murder somebody, take him off the altar and slay him. You know why? Because we don't have murderers in our midst. All these young men that's out here that's, that's doing all these killings and murders, they're not supposed to be existing, brothers and sisters. That's a death penalty. Murders against the laws of the Most High. You're going out there and you're shooting at people. I saw a, a situation this week. The young man is in the hospital. They're in the, the main lobby of Jacoby Hospital. In the hospital. In the main lobby. 
So they, he sees a guy, mind you, I don't know how he sees him because they both got masks on. So I don't know how he knows who it is. But either way, he sees this guy. He's like, oh, yeah, that's the guy I got a beef with. So now the boy is probably by where the wall is. Now he goes, he pulls his gun out, and he starts to shoot. Now, mind you, behind him is a lady with her child. Behind him on the other side is a man that has nothing to do with it. He hits the guy in the arm, but guess what? You could have easily hit the lady. You could have easily hit the baby. You could have easily hit the other man. You're not even aiming properly. You're a murderer. You're foolish. So then, the foolish boy, guess what he did? He signed his name in the admitting log. What? Yes! (laughs) He signed his name. Makubadia Yisrael. Right before, right because I'm in the hospital. I want to get seen. Sign my name. Makubadia Yisrael. Now I see this guy I got a problem with. Oh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go in and try and shoot him. I run out the hospital. I get away. But guess what I did? I left. My name. Makubadia. Oh, this guy. This must be him. Right to the door. Oh. Come here, sir. You, you, you're the idiot that was shooting in the hospital. Caught that same night. Foolishness. Foolishness. But let's read. 15. And he that smiteth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. If you hit your parents, you're going to die. If you even think to hit your parents, you should die. Amen. Listen. He said, if you hit your mother or your father, you're going to die. My Ema is probably 5'2". I maybe even give her an inch. Maybe. I wouldn't even think, think to hit my Ema. First of all, she probably still could beat me up. You know why? Because I ain't going to fight. It's my Ema. I'm going to sit there and take those licks. My Ema had a belt, big black belt. It was about this big. But what made it so effective was that she folded it about four times. Mm. So now it's about this thick. Mm. And when you hear that, the belt buckle ding, 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 coming towards you, you knew what time it was. Underneath the beds. Underneath the beds. Blankets is not protecting you. Sheets is not protecting you. Your pants don't protect you. <laughs> Nothing protecting you. But you took that marker. You didn't disrespect. And if you try and grab that belt, oh, that's not good. Don't do that. See, my Abba had a different way. He will punch. He'll just punch you around a bit. But I already knew when your punch was coming because he had a tactic. He would talk. He asked you questions that you didn't have the answers to. Ask you questions like, are you stupid or are you dumb? It's really not an answer for that. But you sit there. So then he's talking to you, he's talking to you. So now, when he's talking to you, when he put his three fingers down like this and leaning to ask another question, the punch is coming off the three fingers. So it's this, then boom. So you already knew. You see them three fingers go down. He's just like, brace yourself. Make your, do your push-ups. <laughs> brace yourself because it's coming. But you don't raise up to your parents, brothers and sisters. At no age, any age, it never said no expiration on this. Like when you turn 25, that's, that's, no. It says, he that, he that smite of his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. That shouldn't even go into your brain. Don't, go, let, don't even let that seep into your brain. Yeah, that's coming up. You can't even think to hit your mother and your father. I don't, and there's no such thing as your reflexes with your mother and your father. Take that. Just sit there and take that marker. Let's read. 16. And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Kidnapping is against the laws of God. You can't be out there stealing people. This world is crazy. You know that the, the, the amount of people on milk cartons, the amount of people that has been stolen and kidnapped and, and, and what they call trafficking? Brothers and sisters, if we in this if this country went by the laws of God, it'd be a better place. The world would be a better place. That's why it's up to us to teach the world these laws, commandments, and statutes. We're failing the world. We're not just failing each other, we're failing the world. 
It's not supposed to have kidnappers. You imagine you go, you send your child to school and they don't come back. You know how hurt you would be? Like, and you know, black people got these jokes. Oh, you think somebody going to take you? They, you going to call ACS on somebody? They return you. No, there's some psychopaths out there Amen. that you don't know what they doing to children. You got to be careful with your children. I see the, the smallest, smallest children going to school. And I know that we did it when we was young, but now I just... I can't, it just seems different to me now. I was driving one day to, to work. No, I was driving to take Mika out of school one day. I'm driving. Now, you know you got to make the left turn. You know that they have the right of way to walk. The kids have the right of way to walk, so you're letting them walk. So I'm about to make the turn, but I see the little girls, and I'm like, go ahead. I'm going like this, like, go ahead, make the turn. No, I did like this to tell them, come this way to make the turn. So I go like this, make the turn. Do you know those two little girls walked up to my car? I said, go to school. <laughs> what if I was a psychopath? Mm. I dropped me out of school and I went right back to that school and talked to the principal. Y'all better go over stranger danger in here. Mm. Because those two little girls, had I been a psychopath, would have been in my car. Mm. I said, no, no, no. This is an opportunity for me to, to give a lesson. I dropped him off. I went right back to that school. I'll be late for work. I'm, I got this is important because I'm doing this to tell them to cross the street and they come walk up to the car as if I'm telling them to come here. They have no idea. They have no idea. Parents are not teaching. Parents are just saying, go to school. They're not telling them about stranger danger. Don't get in that car. Don't accept candy. All those things from back in the days that we used to hear all the time. Run, tell, yeah, tell someone you trust. Those commercials, they don't show those commercials no more. We are the commercials. We got to talk to our children. I seen them coming towards me. I'm like, oh, my gosh. It disturbed me so bad. I said, no, 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 no. Go into school. They went into school. I went and made, made sure I spoke to that principal and spoke to the teachers and let them know, y'all have to go over this stuff. Let's read. 17. And he that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. You can't even curse your parents, brothers and sisters. And, oh, and again, there's no expiration date on this. It's not when you grown, you older, you could talk. No, you can't. Even, you're not even supposed to talk to your parents no certain way. You got to talk to them with respect. Now, you got some people that be like, oh, yeah, my brother, my, I mean, my son and my mother and my father, they like my, they like my friends. I don't know about that. I don't talk to my parents in the old way. I don't do that. There's a, there's a, a line. Amen. There's a line. Even my sons. I play ball with my sons. I can have a good time with my sons. But my sons know not to disrespect. I'll break their neck. You got to be. You got to hold your parents in such an esteem. A, such a high esteem, brothers and sisters. You got to be careful how you talk to your parents. There's no cursing your parents. Your mother tell you, do this, this, and that. Just go do it. Your father say, this, this, and that. Go do it. No attitudes. No sucking the teeth. Listen, and you think that you think that you saying something under your breath? God can hear you. Amen. So this is really about you offending God, too. You can't just be like, you go in your room and you think, oh, yeah, you saying all types of slick stuff. All types of slick stuff. You think that the most high don't hear you? Israelites have that mentality in their mind that they think that when they breaking the laws of God, that they breaking the laws of God around men and women. You're not breaking the laws of God around men and women. You're breaking the laws of God around God. Amen. You can't do that. Watch your mouth. Be careful what you say because that could hurt you. It could get you killed. Even if you're in your room, even if you're under your breath, even if it's in your mind to think that you're cursing your parents. Get it out your mind. That's a sinful thought. Let's read. 18. And if men contend, and one smite the other with a stone. All right, we boxing, we fighting. Not. We fighting, I'll pick up a stone, right? If he rise again and walk abroad upon his staff, then he that smote him shall be, be quick. quick. Only he shall pay for the loss of time and shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. So now we fighting. We get into a fight. I take a stone. I hit you with it. Boom. You fall. 
You you you're gonna recover. You're not gonna die, but you're gonna recover. But all that time you're out of work, you're not working, your groceries, all that stuff needs to be bought and paid for. Guess what? Guess who's responsible? Guess who? You, Mr. Stone Thrower. You, Mr. Stone Picker Upper. Because we're not supposed to fight each other. Amen. He said, you got to pay for that man. You got to make sure that he's good, his family's good, because you chose to take a stone and hit him with it. Now, you think about it like, oh, man, that's messed up. He started the fight. Obviously, there's going to be judges. And there's going to be some officers to sit there and deal with the case. But guess what? If it comes out that you you hit that man and he can't work, you got to pay. Amen. You got to pay. Or don't fight. It's very simple. The creator made this very like if then type stuff. Like if you do this, then this will happen. If you don't do this, then this will not happen. It's yeah. very if then. Don't fight because you're going to have to pay. Let's read. 20. If a man smite his bondman or his bondwoman with a rod, right, and he die unto his hand, he shall surely be punished. Right. Notwithstanding, if he continue a day or two, he shall not be punished, for he is his money. Right. And if men strive together and hurt a woman with child so that her fruit depart, and yet no harm follow, he shall surely be fined, according as the woman's husband shall lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. Right. So now you fighting, and then... You accidentally hit a lady or bump into a lady and she's pregnant and now she lost the baby. You got to pay. You have to pay. Or you don't fight. Let's read. But. But if harm follow, then thou shalt give life for life. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. Burning for burning, wound for wound, strike for strike. Talking about the lady. Talking about the lady. Now you done hit her. She fell. She lost the baby. Then couple of days passed, and now she passes away. You out of here, brother. You out of here. You got to think about that before you start fighting with your brother. That's why the most high don't want us fighting with each other. Because things happen. I've seen people die from a, head, from a fight. They punch, hit his head on the concrete, and die. I've seen that. That's why the most high say you're not supposed to fight. Because anything can happen. Even if when you think you're choking somebody. You could grab somebody by the neck and you know you think you just putting them in a headlock, you could be killing them. Taking away their, their air supply. Obstruction of breathing. It's a real thing. 26. And if a man smite the eye of his bondman or the eye of his bondwoman and destroy it, he shall let him go free for his eyes' sake. Right. You hit your, your bond servant and you hit him in his eye and the eye is messed up. You gotta let him go for his eyes' sake. And if he smite out the bondman's tooth. Or the bond woman's tooth, so that he let him, he shall go, let him go for free for his tooth's sake. Right. And if an ox gore a man or a woman that they die, the, the ox shall surely be stoned, and its flesh shall not be eaten, but the owner of the ox shall be quit. Right. But if the ox was wont to gore in times past, and warning have been given to its owner, and he have not kept them in, but it have killed a man or a woman, the ox shall be stoned, and its owner shall be put to death. Right, because here you are, you have this ox. They told you, they warned you before. They said, yo, last, last time your ox got out, he hit somebody. He gored somebody. You got to make sure you lock him up properly because thus, thus, and thus happened. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I, I, I'm sorry. And then he leaves the gate the same way. He never makes the adjustments to his gate. The gate is just the same way from when they already warned you that your ox got out. Or we, we can't sometimes see that, right? So let's say the pit bull get out. Or whatever. That vicious Rottweiler that you have. That vicious pit bull that you have that you know if he gets out and he's not doesn't have a muzzle, he's going to bite somebody's hand off or bite somebody's leg off or whatever. And they say, they tell you the same thing. They tell you, bro, that pit is crazy. You need to make sure it's locked up. And you're like, all right, no problem. But you don't adjust. So now here it is. It happens again. You're going to be paying for it. You're going to die too. That dog is going to die. Your ox is going to die. And you're going to die with it because you didn't listen. This is about listening too, brothers and sisters. We got to learn to listen to instruction. Hey, hey, brother, um, you, you know your, 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 your son, when he starts drinking, he starts beating on people. He starts getting out of control. You don't address him. So now somebody's going to address it for you. That's what happens. Or oh, you got these men that, oh, 
they like to drink and use that as an excuse to beat their wife. Ooh, I know they don't want to hear that, but that's the reality. And so they say, oh, I'm drunk. I was, he was drunk. And then she go to her father and say, ah, but this dude hit me. He was drunk. When he gets drinking, when he starts drinking, he gets abusive. So then the father might tell him, listen, that happened one more time. It's going to be me and you. Some father's going to say, it happened once. It's me and you. Because I'm only giving you one time with my princess. You hit my daughter. It's over. Amen. We, we gonna, you, you, it's over. Amen. But you see, some of these men like, oh, I was, I was drinking. I was drinking and, and I hit a, oh, well, you got about one more time with that, brother. And so then they do it again. And then the father's like, all right, I gave you a warning. That's it. And they give you that marker. Don't be talking about, yo, they ran up on me, blah, blah, blah. That's not right. Because it was, so it was right when you was giving her the marker? Come on now. We got to get that out of our system. Get that out of our system. Now, abuse. I know nobody want to talk about abuse, but there's a lot of sisters that's being abused. There's a lot of young boys being abused. A lot of young daughters being abused. Amen. Stop just making it like, oh, that's I don't such and such. That's rabbi this. That's Cohen this. They would never do that. Y'all look at men like y'all not y'all, y'all not supposed to look at men like that. Amen. Men are men. Amen. They make mistakes. They mess up. Your 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 favorite leader is beating his wife. Your favorite leader is doing nastiness. Mm. You got to get that out your head. Nobody want to talk about it. But guess what? There's brothers out there that you call yourself rabbi this and Cohen this and chief this and prince this. And they are beating their wife. Mm. And you get there and you say, and you get up on the Mizbiak and you talk a good one. And and everybody say hallelujah, hallelujah. And they love you. So they can't see past you being up here. But in the bed and in the house, you're a savage. We got to get out of that mind frame. Protect people. No matter who it is. Protect your brothers. Protect your sisters. Protect your children. You think that these things only happen in the, in the, in the Jewish communities and stuff like that? In the different communities? This happens in Israel too. We have to protect our children. Protect our women. Protect our brothers. Protect everyone. Protect against wrong. That's what we got to do. Protect against wrong. That's why we have these laws, commandments, and statutes. Nobody really want to talk about that stuff, but I'm going to always talk about it. Because I know, and it's not like I don't know. I really, really know. I can look at reports that you all can't look at. So I see when Prince this and Chief this and Rabbi this and Cohen this is doing nasty. And then when I blow the horn, it's like, you sure he did that? Was it really him? You sure her face didn't slip and fall into his fist? You sure, brother? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. We have to clean up. The only way we clean up, guess what? Victims got to step up. People got to talk. People got to say what happened. Tell your story. In this age and time of Me Too, Israelites should have been telling their stories. The only way we're going to clean up this mess that we're in is if we start cleaning up the mess that we're in. We got to actually say certain things and say, yo, all right, brother, you right. All right, sister, you right. And I don't have no respect to persons. I don't. If my brother did dust us and us, then my brother did dust us and us. And that's what it is. It's unfortunate, but guess what? We have to deal with things according to the laws, commandments, and statutes of the Most High. What you think? How Eli felt? It was his sons. But guess what? You still got to deal with certain things. I get it. It's your brother. It's your sons. It's your wife. It's your daughter. You have to deal with things accordingly. Or people will feel a way and there will be bad blood between us. And we have to get that out of our midst. Let's read. 30. If there be laid upon him a ransom, then he shall give for the redemption of his life whatsoever is laid upon him. Right. Whether it had gored a son or have gored a daughter, according to this judgment shall be done unto him. If the ox gore a bondman or a bondwoman, he shall give unto its master thirty shekels Mm -hmm. of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. Right. If a man shall open a pit or a man dig a pit and not not cover cover it, it. and an ox or ass fall therein, the owner of the pit shall make it good. He shall give money unto the owner thereof, and the dead beast shall be his. Right. 
and of one man's ox hurt another's, so that it die. Then they shall sell the live ox and, the, and divide the price of it, and the dead also shall they divide. Or if it be known that the ox was wont to gore in times past, and its owner has not kept them in, he shall surely pay ox for ox, and the dead beast shall be his own. Self-explanatory. Let's read. If a man steal an ox or a sheep and kill it and sell it, he shall pay five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. Don't steal. Chapter 22, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If a thief be found breaking in and be smitten so that he, he dieth, there shall be no blood guiltiness for him. Let me tell you something. You come in my house, right? Amen. It's 2, 3 in the morning. And I hear of an opening of a door, opening of a window. And I go and grab my egg dog. And I know my Isha right there, my Yeladim is in there, Mita. Ain't no, I shouldn't hear that sound. Nah. And here it is, you in my house. And pop, 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 I let him go. And you die? It's on you. It's on you. Mm -hmm. You had no business breaking into my house. Right. You, do not, you don't belong there. You came as an uninvited guest. You are a trespasser. You will be dealt with accordingly. Let's read. Two. If the sun be risen upon him, there shall be no blood guiltiness for him. He shall make restitution. If mm -hmm. he have nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. Right. If the theft be found in his hand alive, whether it be ox or ass or sheep, he shall pay double. Now, let's say you got away with it. You got what you wanted to get, but then you got caught. It's in your hand. You got to pay double. Listen. For the life of me, I don't understand how this this uh this country works. You get the thief, you catch the thief, and all you do is lock the thief up. But yet I'm still out of my TV. What about my TV that he stole? Mm -hmm. And I wanted to watch TV this weekend. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just out of a TV and he's just chilling, watching TV in jail. He gets no punishment, but the fact that he's going to jail, that's not no real punishment. I'm still out of my, my goods. Start making thieves pay back double. I bet you they change their their their, their tune. Amen. Bet you they stop stealing. Let's read. If a man cause a field or a vineyard to be eaten, and it and he shall let his beast loose, and it feed in another man's field of the best of his own field, and as the best of his own vineyard, shall he make restitution? Make restitution, meaning you gotta make it good with that brother. Yo, this your 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 animal ate all my good corn. What are you gonna do, brother? You can't just be like, oh, so what? It's just corn. That's my corn. It's my good corn. I was going to make liquor later. Whatever I was going to do with it, it's mine. It's my good corn. Make it better. Make it right. You can't just take people. You can't expect people to take the loss how you take your loss. Man, talk about it. You want to hit me and tell me how to feel. No. No. Bring my corn back. I want you to make it right. Pay it back. If fire break out and catch in the thorns so that the shocks of corn or the standing corn or the fields are consumed, he that can do the fire shall surely make restitution. Right. Now, here you are. You playing with fireworks and something happens and you bearing up somebody's field. What do you think is supposed to happen? We are, a, 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 a organ, we, are, we are a nation of people that is built on righteous laws. If you do something to harm somebody, you have to make it right. Even if it was an accident, you still have to make it right. You think you're going to hit my car and say, oh, that's, that's, that's our car's car. He, me and him is cool. So he's, it's good. He got money. Or say stuff like that. Oh, he got money. He could get it fixed. You don't know. You're not a, you can't be counting people's pockets. You got to make it right. Go to that brother and say, how much do I owe you for that damage? You know, this, this what, what gets me perturbed is hit and runs right. now here you are you don't hit the man car you know you hit the man car and you just gonna go as if you didn't you cause damage that's why I'm like nah you gotta catch that catch that person catch that person sometimes it's impossible but if you can catch that person get a plate get a plate let me tell you I'm not even gonna say that story but get a plate Get a plate and I'll help you. That would just leave it like that. Get you a plate of that person that hit you and I'll take care of it for you. Trust me, I will. It's been done.
Just get a plate. You can't hit people's car and just go and think like you, all right, I'm good. No. Now you hit my car that I'm now I have to pay for it. We gotta we we are righteous people, brothers and sisters. The people around us are not righteous. So that's why we gotta teach them. Sometimes they need to be taught. Let's read. Six. If a man deliver unto his neighbor money or stuff to keep, and it be stolen out of the man's house, if the thief be found, he shall pay double. Right. If the thief be not found, then the master of the house shall come near unto God to see whether he have put forth his hands of his neighbor's goods. Right, because sometimes you got people that's conniving. Right. So now here it is. You let me hold your car. I got the car in my house. I park it. But then I tell my boy, like, yo, I got his car. Just come break in and act like you stole a car. And then that'll be that. And then we got a new car. So now you come over. You're like, yo, bro, what happened? Yo, bro, somebody stole it. It's not my fault. I apologize. No, you got to make it good. And plus, that's why they say you got to do an investigation, basically, to find out, did he really not, not, not know about that car being stolen? Did, and then swear? And guess what? A real investigation is going to go on. Amen. Meaning what? I'm going to check that call log of your phone. I want to make sure you didn't call such and such. You know there's cameras everywhere, right, brothers and sisters? I'm telling y'all there are. We're going to find out if you was connected to this case or not. Yeah, you got a brother that's known to break in the cars. We're going to investigate you. You think that people just be like, oh, yeah, just take that loss. My car is gone. Too. All right. Thank you, brother. No, we're going to investigate. That's why it says, and the judges will ask. You'll come there and see whether or not you have put your hand into it, like you had something to do with it. Amen. Let's read. Eight. For every manner of trespass, whether it be for an ox or for an ass or for a sheep or for raiment, or for any manner of lost thing whereof one say, if this is it, the cause of both parties shall come before God. He whom God shall condemn shall pay double unto his neighbor. Right. An investigation is going to go forth. A case is going to happen. And then we're going to find out who's right and who's wrong. And that's how all cases should go. Let's read. If a man deliver unto his neighbor an ass or an ox or a sheep or any beast to keep it and it die or if it be hurt or driven away, no man seeing it. Mm -hmm. The oath of Yehoah shall be between them both to see whether he have not put forth his hands unto his neighbor's goods right. and the owner thereof shall accept it and he shall not make restitution. Mm -hmm. But if it be stolen from him, he shall make restitution unto the owner thereof. If it be torn in pieces, let him bring it for witness. He shall not make good that which was torn. Right, self-explanatory. And if a man borrow aught of his neighbor, and it die, it and be hurt or die, or the owner thereof not being with it, he shall surely make restitution. If the owner thereof be with it, he shall not make it good. If it be it hireling, he, he loses his, his hire. hire. If a man shall entice a virgin that is not betrothed, uh -oh. and lie with her, he shall surely pay a dowry for her to be his wife. Mm -hmm. If the father utterly refuse to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. And that's the father's right. And I could guarantee you, it ain't going to be that smooth. If the father say, nah, you violated, you, you, it might come with a little bit more than just, you're going to pay that dowry. Don't violate nobody's daughter. Amen. Leave that out your mind. Because you got some real men out here, some real fathers out here, you got some real brothers out here that's going to want you to pay in a different way. So you, you, you got to be, you got to be careful with how you deal with these sisters, these young daughters. Listen, you got some mothers that might take you up out of here. Stop playing with people's daughters. Don't violate. Don't violate. 17. Thou shalt not suffer a sorceress to live. Right. Whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death. Self-explanatory. Brothers and sisters, you, I, my mind don't even go there. But what, don't be looking at no elephant like that. <laughs> don't, be, don't be looking at no horse like that. Don't be, I know what happens. I read the papers. I see what happens. I knew of a story in Jamaica that it happened. Where a man raped a man's donkey. I read it. It happens. Don't do it. It's nasty. It's wild. The most I said, don't do it. Put you to death and the beast for sure to death. Let's read. He that sacrifices unto the God 
Save unto Yehovah only shall be utterly destroyed. There's only one God. There's only one King. Yehovah Zavaot Shemo. We do not give credence to any other being, to anything other than Yehovah Zavaot. We don't couple God's name with anyone. We don't do any of those things, brothers and sisters. There's only one God. Amen. He said Yehovah Eloheinu, Yehovah Echad. Right. Anything other than that is ridiculous. There's no three in one, none of that. There's no body that you have to say before the Most High's name. The Most High never said that. The Most High's name is the Most High's name. That other person that they try to put in there is false. It's false, brothers and sisters. My brothers and sisters that, that as they call themselves, messianic, brothers and sisters, I need you all to do more research. I'm not going to bash. I'm just going to tell you, do more research. You can't praise a God that had a birth date. You can't praise a God that had a, 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 a ghost as his father. That don't even work. That don't even make sense. Think about it for a second. Use your common sense. Everything that you know came from man and woman. A, 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 a father, a mother, a male and a female. I got to specify that nowadays. A male and a female. And there was nothing else. God don't go against his own word. He said everything shall be get after its own kind. Get that out your head, brothers and sisters. My messianic brothers and sisters, go do more research. Read into it. Find out about your so-called savior. And, and find out, because guess what? You can't couple God's name with our God. That's, that's, you can't do it. So do more research. Find out what you're talking about. Find out what you're, what you, listen, and guess what? If it means so much to you, I would think that you would do the research. Amen. That's a fact. It just don't go just, oh, I believe, I believe. No, if somebody's telling you something, do the research. It should mean that much to you that you find out what we're saying. Why we talk about how we talk about the New Testament and how we, we go in, how we go in. I'm not going to today, but I'm just letting you know to do your research. Because our God said, Yehoah Elohim, Yehoah Echad. Yehoah Yah, Yehoah is one. Let's read. 20. And a stranger, thou shalt not wrong, neither shalt thou oppress him. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child, fatherless child if thou afflict him in any wise. If they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear their cry. My I wrath will so wax hot, hot, and I will kill you with the, the sword, sword, and your wives shall be widows, and, and your, your children, children fatherless. Don't make fun of people that lost their husbands. Don't make fun of people that don't have their fathers. He said if they cry out and not hear it, it's going to wax hot, and you're going to be a widow, and you're going to be fatherless. Be careful how you treat people. Be nice to people. You see the sister lost her husband? Be nice. Don't go and say nothing cruel. That's a hard thing to deal with. We got to be nice to each other. Be nice. 24. If thou lend money unto any of my people, even uh -oh. unto the poor with thee, thou shalt not be unto him as a creditor. Neither shalt thou lay upon him interest. This is song about your brother. You gave me $100. I gave you $100. And I said to you, pay me by February 2nd. But when you pay me back, I want 150. That is interest. You cannot do that to your brother, to your sister. If you gave him $100, expect $100. And guess what? I expect my $100 back. Amen. That's why it's called a loan. My father told me that when I was young. You would go to him and say, Abba, may I borrow? You want to borrow or do you want to have? That's important to learn. Because you got to understand the word for borrow. Borrow means you're paying it back. If you say, may I have, that means you're having it and that's it. Be careful how you speak. If you want to borrow, then you borrow. If you want to have, then ask. But make sure you ask properly. Because if you say you want to borrow, I want it back. And guess what? Pay it back. That's the right thing to do. There's a lot of outstanding loans out there. I said there's a lot of outstanding loans out there. And you think because that's, oh, that's just such and such. Oh, Mac got it. He good. I want my money back. 
You waiting for the year of Jubilee? <laughs> what you waiting for? Pay me back. Brothers and sisters, treat each other how you want to be treated. That's right. That's right. If thou would all take thy neighbor's garment to pledge, uh -huh. thou shalt restore it unto him by the going down of the sun. For it is, that is his only covering, it is the garment for his skin, wherein he shall he sleep. sleep. And it shall come to pass when he crieth unto me that I will hear, for I am gracious. For I am gracious. Treat people nice, brothers and sisters. Thou shalt not revile God, nor curse the ruler of thy people. Thou shalt not delay to offer the fullness of thy harvest and the outflow of thy presses. The firstborn of thy son shalt thou give unto me. Uh -huh. Likewise thou shalt do with thine oxen. And with thy sheep, seven days shall it be with this dam. On the eighth day thou shalt give it to me. Right. And you shall be holy men unto me. Therefore. Holy men. Therefore you shall not eat flesh that is torn with beasts in the field. You shall cast it to the dogs. Cast it to the dogs. Brothers and sisters, we're clean people. If the animal, yeah, it's a clean goat right there. But you don't know how it died. You don't know what happened to it. It could have died from disease. We don't know what he, what he died from. Don't eat that. Save that for, listen, don't even deal with that. Brothers and sisters, we are people that was governed around laws, commandments, and statutes. Read this book and continue to read it and get, get into these laws, commandments, and statutes. And begin to treat your brother and your sister like these laws, commandments, and statutes. And you know that there's issues in Israel? Guess what? It's, it's, it's time that we sit down and, and iron them out so that all these beefs could stop. Because guess what? It's not going to stop until the beefs get crushed, until they get dealt with. You know that what you did was wrong? You got to make it right. Amen. How you make it right? I don't know. But guess what? Some of the things that some of our brothers and sisters do to each other is so foul and nasty Amen. that for you to think that there's going to be some sort of peace is beyond me. It's not going to be peace until you sit down and make it right. Hate to be the bit of bad news, but that's how it's going to be. A lot of people got a lot of issues and a lot of beats because they didn't follow these laws, commandments, and statutes. And they think that because they did it, it's done. And that's it. Zehu. I'm good. No. Make it right. Be right. Do right. Live right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With that, with the last two chapters, I'm going to call up my brother, Chief Uzi Elbin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Blessed be. Chapter 1. One second, family. Working solo here, so I gotta do the monitor and everything. Hallelujah. Thank you to Most High God for the life of Chief Mekubadia. Amen. Ben and Levy. I thank the Creator for this day, the Holy Shabbat day. As you can see on the title, this is um, really Chief Nataniel's um, spot, but because of the snow, um, I guess we'll call him up on a later date. Um, but, you know, we still have to do our jobs. My brother Chief Meckle being a Levite, me being a Levite, we have the Danite in the building, and um, we're going to continue in the book of Exodus, chapter 23. Hallelujah. Chapter 23, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thou shalt not utter a false report. Put not thy hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, Neither shalt thou bear witness in a cause to turn aside after the multitude to pervert justice. Neither shalt thou favor a poor man in his cause. So what's important about this, I seen in the, on the internet this week, Cardi B won a, a, a big settlement. 3.8, 3.6, 3.8, something like here. that. Let's round it off to about 4 mil. Amen. Cardi, Cardi B, Amen. the rapper from the Bronx, New York. Mm -hmm. And the case... The, the basis of the case was on slander Amen. and um, character assassination or um, okay. whatever you want to call it. You know, Amen. any one of those fields that you want to. There's a vlogger by the name of Tasha K, I, I believe it's her name. Tasha K. It's, it's a, about three years ago, some report came out on Cardi B that some roommate that she had said that, right. that Cardi B had herpes. A sexually transmitted disease. Um, so she went on Tasha's K's platform, and this is very interesting for everyone out there who's on the internet and likes to put stuff out on the internet about misinformation. Talk about so it. she went out there and she put this woman on her platform, and the woman commenced to saying that Cardi B had this and the other, this, that, and the, and the third, that she was she had this um this disease or whatever.
Cardi B contacted Tasha K and told her, I would like you to please Retract. take the um, content down because it's not true. So um, Tasha K being a vlogger, it's Cardi B. Oh, why don't you come on my platform and talk about it? She's like, no, I don't need to do that. I'm telling you that is not true. Take it down. Amen. She didn't take it down. As the years went on, she kept dragging the woman's name. For whatever you think that Cardi B is or whatever, mm -hmm. you could think it. But the law is the law. And the law in America is also the law. Right? Just like we got Torah. So saying all that, she... um. Tasha kept, K kept dragging her name. Cardi B took her to court for defamation of character. Mm -hmm. um, and, mm -hmm. and the defamation of character case that just the results came out this week. Mm -hmm. The judge in Atlanta, Georgia, judged in favor of Cardi B that Tasha K owes her $3.8 million for defaming her. Obviously, when Cardi B went there, she could prove that these allegations were papers. false. She had papers. And she had papers. And unfortunate for Tasha K that she had to come out of that, you know, out of her pocket. And the whole story is this. Just like Torah. You see, we see things that play out in life today that the Torah never gets played out. Because if we use the Torah as our basis, let's say Tasha K had Torah as her basis. She would understand and know. Like, all right, I can't put misinformation about someone out there if I don't know that personally. That's really what Torah teaches us. Amen. When it's telling us here, thou shalt not utter a false report Amen. because you didn't see it. Amen. You didn't know about it. You don't, you don't have the facts of the matter in order to, to be able to speak on it. You went by a third party. That person can have a, a grudge or a gripe against Cardi B and is putting misinformation out there. Cardi B is not going to go after that person. They're a small fish. Yeah. But you gave that person the platform and you continue to let that get out there. You're the big fish. Amen. So now you have to pay for the misinformation. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these laws, what Chief Mecca, a lot of the laws that he read and what I'm about ready to read, it has to do with liability. Right? You are liable for the actions that you take. Amen. When Amen. you say things, your words, you got you have to be account accountable for your words. Amen. If you're not accountable for them, then they're going to cost you at the end. God, the creator, does not let you get away with doing and saying what you want to say That's right. about people. That's right. It's impossible. You cannot, even if a story is true, right? It tells you not to tell, Bear, because... What happens with a story by the time it gets to the eighth person? It changes. I mean, it changes. And then by the time you're telling the story, it might be parts of the truth in it, and then that person looks at the eighth person who actually spread it and be like, why are you spreading that about me? I mean, and you now you're liable for the words that you said because there is, there is some lies in what you said because the story has been changed. Right. So these are things that we have to be aware of and things that we have to understand as to why we when we when we see certain things, right, you go to the to the right people in order to tell it is that to, to the authorities in order to tell them whether it be in the Israelite court, whether it be the authorities outside, you go to the right people and you don't talk about things that you don't know and you didn't see. You don't know and you don't see it. That's, that's wrong. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Mm -hmm. Neither shall thou hear a witness. Neither shall thou, shall thou bear witness in a cause to turn aside after a multitude to, to pervert justice. So justice. evil, your friends are going down the street. They talk about we're going to run into the polo store and we're going to just grab racks of clothes. It's a bunch of us. They're not going to catch us. Guess what? You're the one that get caught. Everybody else gets away. You Israelite child Amen. who parents Torture try to teach you right, Amen. try to give you the um, everything that you asked for that they could possibly give you, you're the one that's going to be the perp and you're going to take the weight for everybody. Amen. Don't follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shall thou, thou be a witness in the course to turn aside after a multitude to pervert 
justice. Right. So now you are in a multitude, and because y'all in, are in power, Amen. you against someone that's less powerful, although they're right, you pervert the, the, the judgment. You say, nah, we're not going to go for that. We know this guy right here. We know this sister right here. Yeah. They're in good standing. We're not going to really listen to what he has to say, and we might sweep that underneath the rug, and we're going to let bygones be bygones, and we're going to just move on with our lives. We can't do that. Can't do that. It says, verse 4. If thou meet thine enemies, I'm Oh, hold on. Verse 3 says, Neither shall thou favor a poor man in his cause. God doesn't really favor poor people because they're poor. Amen. Because they're in a lower state. You say, oh, Amen. well, you know, all right, man, he stole it, but you know, you know the, the state that he the, 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 the state that he's in, and and we should consider that. Amen. We should take that into consideration. God said, don't take that into consideration. Amen. Right is right and wrong is wrong. Amen. If he stole it, he gotta pay it that's with amen. the fifth. Amen. And that's that. Let us go. If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. You see your enemy's ox or his ass going astray. Now, you said enemies, we all supposed to love each other. Mm -hmm. Listen, you have people in the nation that you don't get along with. Amen. There's certain people that's just never going to get along. And we have to come to the understanding of that. Everybody is not going to be hunky-dory, but... There is, should be some sort of um, civilized way that we should deal with each other. But there's, you know how you become enemies? The same things that Chief Mecca was talking about. That's you keep fact. putting your hands on my sister, man. Yeah. I ain't no friends with you. That's yeah. a fact. Y'all divorced and everything. We still not cool. Yeah. That's how you become an enemy. It, I mean, it happens. Amen. You might have you might have been, now you might be the best non-putting your hands on a sister <laughs> brother in the world. But that brother never forgot that his Amen. sister came to him crying Amen. Amen. with that eye like this, Amen. right? And he's never going, and he's just, he's through with you. Amen. And he don't want to talk to you. He don't want to be cool with you. When he sees you, he's not going to say shalom. He, he's not going to do any of that. And you can't bond that. Amen. That's why the Torah is here to tell you, if you see that guy that you don't like, you see his ox or his ass going astray. It says that you must bring it back to him. Amen. Because at the end of the day, the ox and the ass has nothing to do with <laughs> what y'all got going on. It's just like if you see his children doing something wrong, you're not going to say, man, I don't like that guy. I'm going to just let his children do what they want to do. You're supposed to be an Israelite Amen. and knowing that we all do Torah, right? And understand that, hey, I'm going to stop his child from doing that which is wrong because although me and him don't see eye to eye, you know, that child don't have nothing to do with it and he still does Torah. And that's basically what God is telling you. You still live in this lifestyle. We still living in the same land. Right. So therefore, these are logical things. If you see his ox or his ass going astray, you see um, today is kind of difficult with dogs because you don't know the temperament of dogs. So you might just have to call and be like, hey, your dog is out here. I'm not really <laughs> going to run up on your dog because I'm Amen. not sure how your dog is going to react. But your dog is out here. He's running around in the street, wow. going into people's yards. Amen. You might want to come pick him up. All right, got you. And that's that. Let us go. Five. If thou see the ass of him that hateth thee lying under a burden... Thou shalt forbear to pass him by. Thou shalt surely release it with him. You hear that? You got. You see the the the, the ass of him who thou who you hate. <laughs> you don't like them. Once again, God is telling you to do the godly thing and help them out. You driving on the highway, you see that same guy. Let's put it in today's term. He has a, a blowout, a flat tire. You just see him out there struggling. Get out there and make sure that he's okay. Amen. You might have a, you see him with that little jack that you be like, you know that jack that you got to turn like this? And you know, you, in your trunk, you got the joints that just clack, 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 clack. As much as it hurts you, you pull over, you come out with the jack, you, you, you need help, he's not going to say no. Amen. You jack that car up, you help him change his tire, her tire, and you keep it moving. That's what God wants us to, at the end of the day, to still be godly Amen. and to keep his laws. Right. Regardless of what our status is between each other, 
be godly and keep his laws. Let's go. Six, thou shalt not rest judgment of the poor in his cause. Keep thee far from a false matter, and the innocent and the righteous slay thou not. You hear but that? I will not justify the wicked. I will not justify. Thou shalt not rest judgment of thy poor in his cause. Because he's poor, you could walk over him. Amen. You could do what you want to do. I'm going to rest the judgment away from him. Although he is the one that won and you are liable, but you take it away from him. Because of his, because he don't have money. He's not of high status. So don't do that. Keep thee far from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. Stay far, again, stay far away from a false matter. You can hear stories and be like, that just doesn't sound right. Let me call this person and find out. Because a lot of times we get caught up in situations and you hear things about people and you be like, that don't. Well, let me let me investigate this. And then you come to find out, like, I never did that. That's a lie. Mm -hmm. I was never over there. I, mm -hmm. That was the wrong person. But people have you in certain situations because some people just lie Amen. and make up stories. <laughs> That's just, some people are like that. Pathological liars, they call them. That's a fact. They make up stories. Let us go. And thou shalt take no gift, for a gift blindeth the eyes of him that have sight, and perverteth the words of the righteous. It's very hard to judge someone who's giving you a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Gave you a thousand. It's, it's wise for you to remove yourself from situations like that. And situations when it's your family, right? The wisest thing for you to do is remove yourself from the situation and don't stand there like a lawyer because that's all you're going to be. You're going to be a lawyer. Amen. You're going to lawyer up and you're going to try to defend your family. So the best thing for you to do, because none of us have the spirit of Moses. Amen. Moses stood there and Moses was like, hey, why is why y'all burning that offering? Why y'all not eating it? Right. Moses wasn't with, none, with any of that, even after Amen. his nephews passed away. Amen. He was like, why aren't y'all eating it? And Aaron had to give an explanation. Amen. Right? So... Human nature will make you want to defend those that you love. Amen. And, and, and if someone is giving you money, if someone is, is, is blinding your eyes with money, right. you're going to try to find an angle. Well, maybe we could look at it this way. God doesn't want you to, he doesn't want you to do that. Yeah, I don't want you to do that. Remove yourself or don't take gifts when you're in a position of power because it's going to blind your eyes. Let's go. Nah. And a stranger thou shalt not oppress. For ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing you were strangers in the land of Don't Egypt. oppress people that look different than you when they walk and come in the midst of you and dwell in the midst of you. Make them feel comfortable. Why? Because perhaps the Most High God sent them to learn. And this is going to be a house of prayer for all people. All people should flow to the top of the mountain, to the house of, um, um, to the, to the, house of the Lord. And there they're going to learn this law. So we might get some different looking people coming in here. Make them feel uh, comfortable because we know what it was to be a stranger in Egypt and the treatment of a stranger in Egypt. Let's go. Ten. And six years thou shalt sow thy land and gather in the increase thereof. But the seventh year thou shalt let it rest and lie fallow that the poor of thy people may eat and what they leave the beast of the field may eat. In like manner shalt thou deal with thy vineyard and with thy olive yard. Six days shalt thou work, and but on the seventh day thou shalt rest. So it says right here, six years you work your land, and the seventh year you let it lie fallow. You don't till it, you don't do anything like that. You just let it, let it rest. Just let it rest. That's God said. Why? One of the main reasons why he kicked us out of the land is because we didn't let the land observe his Sabbaths. We didn't let it rest. So it's a seven-year sabbatical. It's a sabbatical year. You're supposed to let the land rest. Amen. Israel was not letting that happen. And why you let it rest? It says so that the poor and the needy could come on your land Amen. that belongs to you, but ultimately the world belongs to who? Amen. To the Most High. Right. He created it. So he said, let those poor people be able to come in there and eat freely. Amen. And then he said, not only that, whatever they leave, let the animals mm -hmm. eat. Yours, 
The animals that wander into your land, like deers and stuff like that. You mm-hmm. when you when you drive on the highway, or you drive on like these towns, like Jersey especially, you see deers in people's backyards. You see them crossing the street. You see them everywhere because after a while they come down closer to where um, humans are because they gotta find food. Amen. So they come in people's yards. They come. They come and eat up whatever grass or whatever you have there. Right, so the Most High God said every seventh year you don't stop them from coming and eating. You don't stop your animals. You don't muscle them. You just let them go into because you're not obviously if you're not tilling the ground, you're not working them. Amen. You're not working the animals, so just let them run freely. Let them have day seventh year of rest. Right, besides the uh, seven day Shabbat day of rest that they have, now they're gonna have a whole year to where they can relax. And then when that cycle begins again, you back to it again. Let us go. Starting again in 12. Six days shalt thou let, do all thy work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest, that thine ox and thine ass may have rest, and the son of thy handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. Everyone rests on the seventh on the Shabbat on the Shabbat day. Amen. Everyone rests on the Shabbat day. The servant, the animals, everyone, you cease, you stop. And we have an understanding of what the Sabbath is, so I don't have to go into a Big explanation. Let us go. 13. Mm -hmm. And in all things that I have said unto you, make you unto you, you take heed and make no mention of the name of other gods. Neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. Well, I got to ask God for forgiveness for that, because sometimes when I go into my lessons, I I do it. But we not supposed to make mentions of other gods out of our mouths. Right. Because God don't we already understand who he is. We know that he is the supreme. He is the supreme. He got so many attributes that we could call him. He's the only one. Amen. Let us go. 14. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. The feast of unleavened bread shalt thou keep. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread as I commanded thee. At the time appointed in the month of Abib, for in it thou camest forth from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors which thou sowest in the field, and the feast of end gathering at the end of the year, when thou when thou gatherest in the labors of thy field, three day three times in a year all thy males shall appear before your holy God. All males shall appear before your holy God. So you got right around the corner we got Pesach and the feast of unleavened bread. Then right after that we got the feast of weeks, which is Shavuot, and that which is actually like the first gathering of our Weed harvest and all that stuff. That's why Amen. we offer up weight loaves on that on Amen. during that feast. And then at the end of the year, not at the beginning of the year, because Amen. those Talk that last harvest, right? That last harvest says at the end of the year, right? That's what it says. So it's not so much that is like the twelfth month, or the sometimes we have like a thirteenth month. Or second Adar. But it's saying like at the end of all your your seasons. Amen. Right? Which is the end of the year. It doesn't say the beginning of the year. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I'm saying that is because Sukkot usually falls during the time when, you know, Sukkot is right in line with um, in the month of Itanim. Right? So if the month of, if we say, um, how they say, um. Rosh Hashanah, right? They say Rosh Hashanah, or they, or, or, or they say Happy New Year during this time. Why would the Most High God or Moses be saying that at the end of the year, in your last in gathering, if that was the beginning of the year? It's not the beginning, it's confusion. God didn't confuse us. Amen. He gave us, he said, he said, he gave us the Torah so that a man with simple understanding will be able to pick it up and understand and be able to teach his family so it's, that's not the beginning of the year, like they say Rosh Hashanah. That is the month of Itanim, which is the seventh month. And the name of that holy day is what? Yom Teruah, the day of the blowing. Which comes in that seventh month, which opens up the beginning of the month, which is also a new moon. Amen. Let us go. 18. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread. Uh-oh. Neither shall the fat of my feast remain all night until the morning. The choicest first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. 
Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. Most I say he don't want nothing with Lebanon when you offering up an offering before him. Man. He don't want nothing with Lebanon. Don't let it remain till the morning. That's simple, mm -hmm. right? When it's being offering up to the Most High God. Mm -hmm. The best of your fruits. The best. That means the ones that look the best. God requires the best from us at all times. And everything, not only of our fruit, but even from us, when we come before him, we, he requires his best from all of us. It says here, thou shalt not seed a kid in his mother's milk. So now you wouldn't, you wouldn't understand um, uh, people cooking with milk. Yeah, but people cook with milk. And what the Canaanites would do is that they would take um, a kid, a, a, a goat, right? A, a mama's goat, mm -hmm. a mama goat's milk, and then the kid is the is the, the the baby goat that she had. They would cut that kid, and they would right with the mother's milk. They would boil right that meat of that kid. And God said, "That's cruel, cruel. Don't do that." So from that, you get um, hmm. the Europeans who say you can't eat. You can't mix dairy and, and, and basar, right. right, in the same place. But that's not what the law of God was. God said, don't see a kid in his mother's milk. Right, right. That's cruel. So if you're having yourself a turkey burger huh. and you have a, a piece of cheese on it, that's not seeding a kid in his mother's milk. Talk about it. Sometimes you could try to do Torah, but you go beyond what Torah calls for. There you go. And Most High God said, get knowledge, get wisdom, but, but above all you're getting, get what? Understanding. Understanding. Understanding tells you that a turkey burger and goat's milk or, <laughs> or cow's milk is not coming from the same animal. Right. So therefore, it's good for you to consume. Mm -hmm. Let us go. 20. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee by the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Take heed of him and hearken unto his voice. Be not rebellious against him, for he will not pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. Mm -hmm. But if thou shalt indeed hearken unto his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For my angels shall go before thee and bring thee into the Amorite, bring thee in unto the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Canaanite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite, and I will cut them off. Mm. Now, that's, this is something that I've always been thinking about. That angel, is it Moses? Is it an actual messenger that the Most High God sent in the midst of us? But he said he will send an angel in the midst of us. He said he will speak unto you. Now, we didn't hear about any entities or any, any um, malach, malach that the Most High God sent in the midst of us. So I often wonder, is that talking about Moses? Is Moses that messenger, or is it an actual physical um, angel that took on the form? Because most, for most part, angels take on the form of men Amen. when they come on the earth. So is it, it was someone there that was a god and was like, I'm going to lead you all in, or was it talking about Moses? Mm -hmm. That's food for thought because it said a, a, a malak, that he was sending a man. It said he would speak unto you. Now, I didn't hear about it. The only one that spoke to us and brought us messages from the creator was who? Mm -hmm. Moses. So that's that's a question that 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 I would like to um, that I would like to find out. I don't have the answer for it. Maybe someone does. Let us go. Twenty four. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their doings. Yeah. But thou shalt utterly overthrow them and break in pieces their pillars. You hear that? You should not bow down to their gods. You should not be intrigued by their gods. Amen. But when you walk into that land, you shall overthrow it. Overthrow their gods and break them into pieces because now God has given us the land. Why? Because you don't want to start to inquire of these gods and perhaps you fall victim to the praise of these things and trying to inquire and try to say, oh, you know, this practice is okay. We could do this and we could incorporate this with what the most high God, you know what I mean, what, what we have and what we do for the creator. God don't even want you to do that. Nope. Don't mingle. Nope. That's why we have to be very careful when we take songs that are dedicated for a false god, uh -oh. not so much a, a common uh, 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 um, secular song. Like you got a secular song that 
don't write, and you turn the words and you make it towards the most high. You know, some people might frown at that, but that wasn't dedicated to a God, right? We have to be careful where they mention in the name of the false God, and now you want to put Yah's name there. That's already polluted. Right. Amen. Amen. That's already polluted. You can't, we can't take that, you can't replace, Amen. right? The, the name of the false God with a with the name of Yehovah and act as if Yehovah will accept that. Because Yah is first in everything. Amen. He said he wants the best of everything. So if he's first, Amen. and then you don't take his the words, mm. right? Switch them around and it was created for Ba'ah. Mm. And now you want to say Yahweh. Yeah. I don't I don't know if that works in, in, in the courts of heaven with the most high. Amen. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. We might have to investigate. We might have to talk about that. Amen. Let us go. 25. And you shall serve Jehovah your God, and he will bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from thee in the midst of, from the midst of thee. It says what? And you should do what? Serve Jehovah your God. You shall serve Jehovah your God when we go into the land. But today, in this land of our captivity, we should serve Jehovah our God and do what? And he will bless thy bread and thy water. And he will bless your money, your paycheck. Mm -hmm. And do what else? And I will take sickness away from the And midst I will of take thee. sickness away from you. So we're not blessing your whole enough in this world. Mm. Amen. Because this plague is Talk still in the midst it. of us. Talk mm. about it. People are not Amen. acknowledging the most high God. So that's why he sends plagues in the midst of people when they're not <laughs> at adherence to his law. Amen. It's simple. Amen. You bless the name of the creator, you get blessed. Right. Read on, my brother. 26. None shall miscarry nor be barren in thy land. And the number of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my terror before thee and will discomfort all the people to whom thou shalt come. If we do that which is right and we bless the name of the most high God, nobody will miscarry. We won't have barren women. Mm. We won't have men shooting blanks. Let's and go. I, and I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. And I will send the hornet before thee, which shall drive out the Havite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite from before thee. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate. And, and said the, the righteous is as bold as the lion. Right. That means that once we do that which is right, we could walk in with confidence yeah. and not be afraid of what's before us, giants and the, the beasts of the field. We're not afraid of any of that because we're walking in with confidence. Why? Because we're walking with the creator and we're doing that which is right. Amen. Let us go. Read on. And the beast of the field multiply against thee. 30. By little and little I will drive them out from before thee until thou be an increased and inherit the land. And I will set thy border from the Red Sea even unto the Sea of the Philistines, and from the wilderness unto the river. And I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and thou shalt drive them out before and you. And you should drive them out before you, if you do that which is right. Let us go. Thou shalt make no covenants with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee to sin against me. For thou will serve their gods, and they will be a snare unto This is very important. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. That goes back into what I'm talking, what I was talking about, inquiring of their gods. Amen. Should make a, you start accepting things. I've been talking about it for the last month. Amen. About the the acceptance of of Xmas pictures with Israel, all this stuff. Mingling. Mingling and 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 muddying up. Yeah. What the create the pureness of the creator. Valentine's Day coming up. Valentine's Day coming up. You're gonna go out there, buy your significant other chocolates because they don't keep Torah. So now you're going to, it's a give and take. Okay, Amen. I'm going to accept you for what you do, but you know, I do celebrate these things. And I'm bringing you, and when he or she brings you a Valentine's Day present, Amen. you don't refuse it. Amen. You compromise and you say, well, this Valentine's Day is just a commercialized type of thing. The, the Most High God said, don't follow the ways of the heathens. Amen. Saint Valentine's Day. Saint Valentine's Amen. Day. Amen. So these are things that we begin to, little by little, they, they chip away at you. That's what God is saying. They, little by little, they chip Amen. away at you. They chip away at you. 
And before you know it, you, you, you got a ham on Christmas in the middle of your table. You say, I don't eat it, but you know the family's coming over and he wanted a glazed ham. So you make it. Not a ham. A ham. You glazed. A glazed ham. And you made it. And you made it. And you made it. Amen. Right next to the turkey. Then you try to have some dreidels and some chocolate talking about representing Hanukkah. Yeah. <laughs> but the big ham is there. He got six point stars on the Christmas tree like, like we're doing this together. Amen. That's what God is talking. Exactly That's what God is talking about. about what you're going to begin to do. And a Hanukkah, but, but it's a Christmas tree. <laughs> Decorated. I know some, some people out there is, is oh, he talking about this again, but I got to drive the point across. God is trying to teach us that we're not supposed to mingle. Amen. We're not supposed to mingle. The minute you begin to mingle, you compromised. Amen. Because if you're not strong enough to turn that person to walk in this way of life, you're a compromised individual. Amen. And you're going to see it as, the, as progression go on. You're going to see it. Now, you could be a strong individual. Some people are strong and they bring their significant others in. God bless you. Amen. But the ones that are not, it might not work out. Let's go. Chapter 24, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And unto Moshe, he said, come up. Unto Yehoah, thou and Aharon, Nadab, and Abihu, mm -hmm. and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. And Moshe alone shall come near unto Yehoah. But they shall not come there, neither shall the people go up with them. And Moshe came and told the people all the words of Yehoah and all the ordinances. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the word which Yehoah has spoken, we will do. The people, they entered into an agreement with the Creator. Before it was Abraham. Amen. Abraham entered into an agreement with the Creator that went during the time of the circumcision, Right? And the token of the covenant was the circumcision. Amen. That every male child should be circumcised on the eighth day. And that covenant was that he will be our God, that Yah will be our God, and we will be his people. Amen. That was the covenant. Everything that came out of Abraham. Now, as a whole, Amen. we're entering with, into the covenant. It's not just Abraham now. This is the descendants of Abraham are now moving forward and entering into that covenant with the creator through the prophet Moses. Now Moses is about ready to go on an excursion with the 70 elders and um and and Yehoshua and you're going to see the levels of how they could come up, right? Or come and approach the creator. And the creator was very specific and said, "Moses, Amen. you come up." Amen. Everybody else can't come up. That's right. That means everyone else is not in the position. Everyone Amen. else is not Hands are not clean enough to come up there. Moses is. I trust Moses. The rest of y'all, y'all still got, not even Joshua. You can't come all the way up there. Let us go. Four. And Moshe wrote all the words of Yehoah and rose up early in the morning and built an altar unto the mountain, 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. And he sent the young men of the children of Israel who burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto Yehoah. Mm -hmm. And Moshe took half of the blood and put it in the basins. And half of the blood he dashed against the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and he read in the hearing of the people. And they said, all that Yehoah has spoken, we will do and obey. The book of the covenant was already the laws that were given, that, mo that we already recited. So they took the book of the covenant. This is almost like, like the prelude to what's to come. right? These are the things that we're going to live by. And the Most High God, and now we're swearing before the Most High that we're going to keep this. So the Book of the Covenant is the, the contract. That's the agreement. That's the contract. And we're agreeing to this contract, and we're entering into this contract with Yah. Let us go. Verse 8. And Moshe took the blood and sprinkled it upon the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant which Jehovah had made with you in agreement with all these words. With all these words. And that agreement, once again, 
It still doesn't move away from Abraham's original agreement. It just now we got specified laws Amen. and we got, you know, contracts have clauses that mm -hmm. have different things that you got. You got to read the small print. But this contract is not overcomplicated. Amen. It's simple. It's given to a people that's coming out of a predicament of, of being enslaved. But the contract, if you read it and you honor it, you get, it's more benefits for you than, any, than anything else. Let us go. Now, then went up Moshe and Aharon, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Yisrael. And they saw the God of Yisrael, and there was under his feet like a paved work of sapphire stone, and the light of the, of the very heaven for clearness. Right. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand, and they beheld God and did eat and drink. Well, they didn't see God physically. Because right? no man could see God and live. But what they, what they expressed, what they saw, the vision that they saw, Amen. was something out of this world. To where they said, we saw God. Right? But what they saw was, the, you know what I mean? When the, if the Most High God, God happens to make us see his court and his glory, we will not be able to, Amen. to take it in. It's like in the book of Ezekiel where um, Ezekiel saw the wheel within the wheel mm -hmm. and the wings and the and the and the and the kettle beam and the with Amen. the and the and turning and, and each side of the face had a, a different face, one of a bear, one of this, one of a human. We can't if we was to see that today, some of us will pass out. A wing on top of a wing, and 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 they move like, they move like this. They don't got to turn because they got four different faces. Amen. North, south, east, and west facing north, south, east, and west. <laughs> we we will pass out. Ezekiel passed out. Ezekiel passed out. Yeah, it was in this vision. <laughs> yeah. Let us go. Twelve. And Yehovah said unto Moshe, Come up to me in the mount and be there. And I will give thee the tables of stone and the law and the commandment which I have written that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose, and Moses rose up. And Yehoshua his minister and Moshe went up into the mount of God. And unto the elders he said, tarry ye here for us. until Y'all stay right here for us. Me and Joshua going to go a little bit step higher. Let's go. Until we come back unto you. And behold, Aharon and Hua are with you. Whosoever have a cause, let him come near unto them. And Moshe went up into the mount, and the glory of Yehoah abode upon Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moshe out of the midst of the cloud. And the appearance of the glory of Yehoah was like a devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moshe entered into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mount. And Moshe was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. So the thing hallelujah. is, hallelujah, it was a cloud up there, right? But it said to the children of Israel, it looked like it was fire. Mm. Like the top of the mountain was on fire. But it explains that it was a cloud. Amen. Right? So God will make you, the creator will make you see things that, man, that, that, that looks like the mountain is burning up. And Moses went up there. Amen. And that's, this is what the people are looking at. Amen. They're like, Moses went up there. Now, another thing, when Moses went up there and he was in the midst of the cloud, Moses had to wait six days. Man. God wasn't ready for him. God didn't say, all right, you up here now. Let me talk to you. I said, now nah, sit down and you're going to learn some patience. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes your parents do that to you. Hey, come over Amen. here, sit down. But Abba, do you, I got to do, nah, just sit right there. Amen. Amen. Just sit right there. You know who used to do that to us? Uh, may the most high God bless his memory, Chief Amos Ben Yehuda. We be up on notion. And he sees a Saturday night. He could see in us what he could see the folly. Because we left. We went home. We changed. And now it's about 9.30 at night. And we come. Before we leave, we going by the camp. Right? To see who's up there. And he just take a look at us. He take a look at us. And he be like, um, hey, Big Man, come over here. Go down to... To um to Fulton and, and Notion and get me to Fulton and Notion. There's a store right. No, they have the they have the thing down there. They have the thing that the one that I need down there. So you run down to Fulton and Notion, come back. 
Oh, look, ease yourself, big man. Ease yourself. <laughs> um, go to the restaurant. Go to Big Ed and get get some some um, vegetables and this. Uh, go to the to the Chinese Korean store and get some vegetables. We're gonna cook up something. You be like. <laughs> 11 o'clock, 11.30. Whatever plans you had, yeah. he's still telling you, ease up, ease up. Get, get, get some soup before you leave. Before you know, it's like 12.30, 1 o'clock. You're like, I ain't going nowhere. And then he start. <laughs> well, you don't know what I stopped you from tonight, big mind, blah, 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 blah. You about ready to get into some folly. And we be there just like, oh, boy. <laughs> but at the end, he was right. We don't know what we was going into. We didn't know he was stopping us because he could see in us. We was young. 18, 19, he like, nah, y'all not ready for that out there. And y'all and y'all got those spirits that when if something jump off, y'all going to go all the way with it. So, no, 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 no. Y'all just stay right here. Just stay right here. He will save us. He will save us from ourselves. Because he was once a young man. Right? And he knew his spirit. So, therefore, he seen certain things in us. That he would just shut it down without even telling us we were shut down. It was just, just hold on. Go over there. Go over there. Come over here. Go back, boom. And by the time you look around, it's like, you're not going to tell him no. And if he's telling you to hold on, even though you'd be like, I got to go, you'd be like, hold on. You respect your teachers. You don't disrespect your teachers. You fall back. And next thing you know, you there. You wake it. You, you thought you was going to. Um, the sun was going to come up on you in the club and it came up with you in the camp. <laughs> and you come out the camp and you be like, you know, what, what are you going to do? Toraya. You know what I mean? So those are, those are the, the, the lessons in life that, that, that makes you the person that you are. I'm sure you had those moments with somebody that did that for you. That's why some of us are, 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 are strong in certain Things and, and we have conviction in certain things because of what our teachers did with us. What they saw in us and what they put in us in order to, in order to make us stronger. Amen. A Prince Paul would never miss a day of like this. Yeah, he'd be like, all right, the man, we're going to come out and like you say, yeah, but this, so he must have got it from calling. Right, the man come out and we're going to shovel the place. And while we're here, we might as well have some services. Amen. We ain't good. We're not going to miss. You know, I mean, it was a, a little bit easier when we were more centralized, but it was still like we're going to come out Amen. and we're going we gonna to shovel this snow and we got all hands on deck, men. You come on and we're going to do what we're going to do. Right. You know what I mean? And, um, and that's just how it was, you know. But no, um, you know, we all have different situations. I understand it's not... It's not a, it's not a um, deal where we're going to be, you know, anybody's going to be angry at anyone. But I think that young men, if you're a young man, you should always consider your place of worship. Amen. You know what I mean? We got, an elder, we got an elder here that is strong like a rock. He, he called me this morning and said, no, 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 everything is all right. Everything, I have everything ready. Don't worry. He called me, he called me this morning and said, he got everything ready. Come out. Amen. You know what I mean? So I'm like, the elder's telling me that. Call a couple of brothers and say, We're going to come out. So we bless the name of the Creator. And I'm thankful that I made it out today and we could enjoy each other's company. I pray that the Most High Creator of Heaven and Earth be with us all and protect us at this time. I say the words of the blessing. The Most High God will look down upon each and every one of us and grant us a blessing. Hoping and praying that the Creator will be with each and every one of us, even in these times, that the Most High will protect us, that He will keep us that he would guide us and he would even cause us to um, get the desire.